as you might expect, we are continuing the trend of the past few months of focusing on minerals and elements. Today's topic is sulfur. Unlike what we have been speaking about, sulfur is non-metallic. Even calcium, which we spoke about last week, is metallic. Sulfur is one of the most abundant minerals in our body. Amino acids, methionine, and cysteine in protein sources are the predominant source of sulfur in our diets. Other foods, even if you eat lots of garlic, onion, broccoli, don't really make up a significant amount that is utilized efficiently by our bodies. Sulfur has been used for thousands of years, millennia, in medicinal treatments, which makes sense as it's tied to the chief antioxidant in the body, glutathione. And you know, when you burn eggs or sometimes like various industrial practices, you smell sulfur. And in the past, shamans might have actually aromatized sulfur and you would inhale it and you would get like a small amount in your lungs that would kind of boost your body's antioxidant capacity. When you look at food sources of sulfur, it's pretty safe to say that most diets are getting too much. You know, granted, you're eating animal protein. A vegan diet is completely ridiculous. I'm not even going to entertain it. You're deficient in everything. We're not going to guess what type of crazy food a vegan has to eat. They think they can get sulfur. What we want to figure out here is the standard American diet, keto, carnivore diets. Are there issues there? So going down the list, foods in red, I'm not too much of a fan of. Blue is acceptable. Now peanuts, organic, you can have them maybe a couple times a month without too much of an issue, but I wouldn't consider them a viable, consistent source of sulfur. Beef, cheese, kind of a fan of, but if you guys missed the calcium video last week and various videos I've done on dairy, you might not want to have dairy in your diet depending on your specific circumstances. Haddock, fish is too polluted, egg white and egg yolk. I'll touch more on that later, but allergen concerns, different things. I don't think most people should be eating eggs either. Oatmeal, yeah, I think that's okay to include in your diet. You know, would I consider it for sulfur? Probably not, but it's good for detoxing the liver, has soluble fiber, kind of like a clean slate, but it is hard to get high quality oats and oatmeal. Almonds, pretty high in anti-nutrients. They're not fresh, not a great, you know, just not the best choice. Barley can be a decent quality grain. It's okay to have it, especially like barley soup in the winter. Walnuts, look, if you're gonna have like organic sprouted almond and walnut butter a few times a week, you know, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world, but for sulfur, it, there's much other things in those foods that you would be getting, especially caloric density gaining weight as opposed to this specific mineral. So yeah, most people are eating beef, they have cheese in their diet, they're eating a lot of eggs, especially standard American diet. You're getting plenty of sulfur. What you're not getting is the nutrients you need to utilize sulfur. And it interacts with zinc, molybdenum, copper, calcium, and selenium. And you can clearly see why a carnivore diet becomes quickly minerally imbalanced. Sulfur is antagonistic and synergistic with zinc and molybdenum, but directly antagonistic to copper, calcium, and selenium. Those three minerals being the typical deficiencies in the carnivore diet. I would say sulfur is excessive enough in all diets for the most part. On carnivore, you're not getting enough selenium or molybdenum to keep it in check. A stands in American diet is so deficient in everything, including zinc, so sulfur isn't really being utilized. This excess of sulfur results in copper, selenium, and molybdenum deficiencies. Some of the main minerals I have on organsupplements.com actually, and when I made that website, the supplements, it was because I needed to take specific things to rebalance and fix myself from the carnivore diet. So. It's interesting how much you can be missing. So high sulfur intake plus low minerals equals skull. What I mean is you're not gonna feel so good. Sulfur toxicity isn't going to actually have symptoms as, you know, technically speaking, sulfur is not toxic to the body. What happens is you will see symptoms of being deficient in the minerals that sulfur is antagonistic to. For copper, that's anemia, heart palpitations, paleness, uh, histamine intolerance is a big one. Molybdenum is headaches, 
nausea, vomiting, heart palpitations. Selenium is infertility and fatigue, and that's a big one. You know, you go carnivore, your sex drive's gone, could be selenium. If you have sulfur deficiency, it's more likely you're missing those other minerals to activate and use the sulfur. So since it's incredibly vital to antioxidant function, the symptoms can be really general. Arthritis, brittle nails, depression, memory loss, slow wound healing. What's interesting is that sulfur deficiency symptoms typically get better when removing sulfur from the diet so that those other minerals can rebound and you start balancing out your metabolism and your mineral profile in your body. Most of you guys are probably familiar with NAC and acetylcysteine, you know, cysteine and methionine being the two main sulfur containing amino acids we mentioned earlier, incredibly effective at boosting antioxidant capacity in the body so much that Amazon banned it. You can't buy it on Amazon and they actually block payments on organsupplements.com. You have to use PayPal now because I have a product that does contain NAC in it, the antioxidant support supplement. The elite psychopaths controlling business are taking very effective solutions out of the hands of the masses. And it seems that NAC supplements are very available to the body. They can bypass those mineral requirements that you need to use sulfur from food. And what's more realistic for the average standard American diet to do? To go completely organic and balance all of these crazy minerals or just take a NAC supplement? The methylation pathway involves most of the important cycles in our bodies. Citric acid, aka energy cycle, urea cycle for removing waste, folate cycle for cellular functions, and the methionine cycle for detoxing, filtering, overall cellular maintenance and health. And the metabolites in those pathways contain a lot of sulfur. So as important as sulfur is, we need to make sure we have everything in the body to utilize it properly. And if you want to know more about those cycles, you know, I have a video on kidneys, I have a video on antioxidants, I have a video on inflammation. You can check those out where I go a little more in depth. Now last week you guys weren't too happy when I said, hey, you probably shouldn't be consuming dairy. Same here with eggs. And the reason is that people will start having half a dozen, a dozen, two dozen eggs per day. And because of the nutrient profile and texture of eggs, the sulfur is highly absorbed, will cause imbalances much quicker than only eating meat. That plus high quality eggs even have allergen concerns because the feed is never wild and perfect. And egg whites also contain you know, the lysosome, the substances that can cause leaky gut. My suggestion for most is very simple. Remove eggs and dairy, see how you feel. Problem is, most people enjoy these foods to an extreme extent and will justify their consumption in any way. You know, I'm here, you know, over 10 years of researching nutrition, following diets since I was a teenager. You know, when I say things, I'm not gonna sit here and argue with people. <laughs> like, you, you can take my advice for what it is, try it out, or just, go be sick and unhealthy listening to all the other pricks online. So uh, I think that's everything for today, guys. Uh, on organsupplements.com, we have a bunch of those minerals you might need to utilize sulfur. We have a magnesium oil that actually has MSM, a form of sulfur that is great for energy feeling good. And we have NAC and acetylcysteine directly in the antioxidant support supplement. So check that out, guys, organsupplements.com. And you can also check out frank defilecom for all of my other businesses. You know, if you guys could please just share this on any social media you have. I work you know, pretty hard to do these videos every week. And uh, it's just, it's getting to be a lot lately. So please drop a like as well. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And I will see you guys for tomorrow if I don't fly off to Colombia for some coca and booba. <laughs>